So, I guess in accordance with Ancient Contract, we're going to have to bring up a comparison to Final Fantasy VI at this time. Agreed? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. I mean, it's not the first or the last RPG to do this gambit, but it is the, probably the most notable one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't... Like I said, I'm pretty sure it is the law that when this kind of thing happens in a video game, that you have to make a comparison to Final Fantasy VI. Which, I mean, notably had a cast of, like, 14. Was it, was it 14? Was it 16? It was a, it was a big cast. It was, yeah, it was like 13 or 14 characters, so close enough. And there, there was stuff everywhere, and there was a big world with a lot more than six locations in it. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of dancing around the idea of, of a comparison saying that this, that this game is lacking in some way, although I don't think that's really actually true. It just kind of feels that way when you stack up the numbers. And remember that we're doing this in a, a many years later world of significantly higher production budgets and production values, it's all just kind of weird. I don't even think there's anything specifically to be gained by comparing it too deeply with Final Fantasy VI, other than to note that, yeah, we're doing the thing where something goes really wrong and then we have to get everybody back together. You know, I'm glad that this lady just instantly was like, no, you can't. Why am I even bothering? She gets it. She knows the deal. I mean, given everything else from before, would you turn these people away? I mean, I don't think that she knows that we're the reason the tree bloomed. But also... I don't know. I just think it's funny that she just sees us and is instantly like, <sighs> Okay, just just go. Maybe Jella just somehow knows innately how to project an aura of deep, deep respect. I mean, not being a raging asshole is probably a good place to start, all things considered. Right, but like... I don't know, Jella just seems much more like the type to to go along with being turned away due to not being allowed. Whereas Kalos were just like, no, fuck you, I'm fighting you. Which seems like it should be pretty compelling. Maybe she did learn something from Kalos after all. Yeah, I can definitely see this being very, very irritating. Oh, it's just the same thing again. Ah, but this one has blue eyes, because he's a water elemental, whereas the last one was dark. I see. That's totally valid, and not just an irritating palette swap with presumably slightly higher numbers. Yes, but only slightly. Like, let's not say anything, let's not give it too much praise now. See, now I can't stop noticing that she says this. So, like, is is there actually anything even slightly different going on in this fight than elements and numbers? No. Not really. That is actually disappointing. The next... yeah, the next one, I think is... I think has an instant kill ability, if that means anything. That's not really very interesting. It's very annoying. It's about the only thing that makes it notable in any way. 
But like, uh, yeah, it's, it seems like very palette swap, different numbers, cut and paste gimmicks. I don't like it. It's very much just do the five things, and the five things are basically all the same. Now there's an actual point of comparison to Final Fantasy VI. Each one of the, the things that you have to do to, re to recruit or to re-recruit all of the various party members were, like, actually different. They were all, like, they were a bunch of different quests. You did different things. You had to engage with everybody's stuff. You had to do their homework. You had to deal with their characters. Sometimes you even had to sort out their shit. It's like... Writing. It's video games. This isn't video games. This is just busy work. And I definitely don't like it. Like, at least they could have given us five unique fights. That's what I think ought to be the bare minimum that we should expect from this kind of a deal. I mean, they have different names and different elements. That makes them unique fights, right? I mean, if you're an executive producer, sure. Like, see, that one had some bullshit about how it strikes fear into the heart of men or some shit? I don't know, I don't read those pictures. What are you doing here? You shouldn't be wasting time. Right, wasting time. It was nothing. I just happened to pass by on my morning walk. Like, are you two flirting? Must have been quite a walk. So how's the battle situation? They're holding up. Lady Karelia, King Latican, and Duke Calburn have joined forces and are doing all they can. It turns out that's not really very much, but we need to face reality. Okay, yeah. See, here we go. Selena gets it. Well, to be honest, things seem to be getting worse. Oh, you don't say. Like with the giant floating demon castle, things are getting bad. Surprised. Apart from the knights, almost none of the troops have any combat experience. They're really no match for the enemy forces. We have to do something. I'm with you there. Let's go. The battle of truth lies ahead. And Cal well, it turns out that all of the help that they might have given us wouldn't really have amounted to very much. Yes, he does. I don't know if that makes me feel better or worse about this. I mean, does Callus need our help? Like, does he really? I mean, he seems to have this pretty firmly in hand. He's out there living his best life. Like, we're just gonna go and fuck that up for him. Like, I don't really see us helping very much there. You see, we're, we're going to help him in the same way that, uh that Marsh helped all of his friends in Tactics Advance. Right. A surprisingly apt comparison. In that, you know, Callus is living in a complete fantasy land. And we're going to literally destroy it. So that's something. Wow, yeah, that's pretty on point. Yeah! Girl picked up a thing that, uh, might have been a Star Magnus. It sure fucking was! I mean, that's pretty... straightforward, right? How do you think they hear about it? Like, do they just have spies everywhere? Are these guys a player on the world stage? You know, I suppose it could be said that, you know, we are, like, literally right next to a blue flower, so maybe, maybe, like, that guy is just, like, sitting there, like, listening right by the flower and being like, oh, oh, there it is, they found one.
Yeah, I feel like even by the existing standards of this game's world, that uh, this whole thing is a little bit incongruous, just a, a tiny bit. Definitely one of them video game things. Definitely one of those times where we just have to all agree that we're not going to ask why nobody actually uses these flowers for, like, transport. I mean, they seem to be one way. Does the Star Church just exist in a quantum superposition in all the locations and you can just go to it and then back? Yeah, like, the, the flowers seem to be one way, so, you know, y you go back to the same place you came from. Right, but, like, everybody everybody can go there. Like, can, can multiple people go there? Is, is the thing instanced? Can you just meet up there? Can you use it for communications? Does it have implications on, like, space-time? If you go somewhere, does it instantaneous? Like, I... Now that we've raised these questions, it's imperative that we address them. Because that's just how people's brains work, and it's definitely very important that everything in fiction, like, constantly be able to hold up to all kinds of scientific scrutiny. It's the law. I am very healthy. You could- we could do that. Or we could pick up this weed that disappears, and just go get another party member. Right, I forgot about that thing. At least it's, like, right at the entrance, so that seems like it's maybe not completely shit to go and do if you forget it. Although maybe the hint is really, really obtuse. I'm putting my money on the hint being really, really obtuse. Anyway, this lady really wants to see some clouds. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, fortunately for her, I brought some clouds with me. I'm not sure why she's breathing them in, but, you know, you do you, lady. Well, we, we free it from the card, and it just turns into just water and just falls to the ground, and now it's a puddle. See? It needs to withstand scrutiny. Anyway, now that Callus is out of the picture, we can, uh, we can come check in on Trill's family, and, uh... You know, with all the implications that it has. Yeah, right? Girl. Girl, please. You- you could not be implying this worse. Please have better taste in Mangella. Anyway, I- I've got bad news for you about, um, Callus's suitability for literally any kind of role for any purpose ever. I mean, he seems to be doing all right as prison guard. Is he, though? Like, I, I can't help but notice that, you know, there's, there's very much an air of having had one job there. And, uh, I don't know, I feel like the outcome kind of speaks for itself. Maybe I'm being unreasonable. I don't know. I don't think I'm being unreasonable. Anyway, just in case you needed another demonstration of just how absurdly powerful their security system was. Yeah, we just jump in a little canal and stroll right on up to it. It's perfect. Just absolutely flawless in every way. 
Anyway, given how the rest of these encounters have gone, I am a tiny bit unnerved at the fact that you're taking time to do some setup before taking on this one. Oh, I'm definitely not. That was just a case of Savina has like three rotten food in her deck, so I just trashed those. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyway, if you missed it, the hint for this one is like, the plant that listens not to the logic of this world or some shit like that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that would have probably done a decent job at implying the thing, but only just via very oblique process of elimination kind of deal, like... It's the only thing that that could be referring to, even though that really doesn't make much sense. Yeah, I'm gonna go along with uh, continuing not to have a high opinion of this part of the game. Well, shade. I can't say she's wrong. I mean, it seems in very much in fitting. Anyway, I, I assume that, you know, based on the fact that they're going in, in an order and that they are, as well as other things, changing gimmicks and that we're going with increasing party members, that these things become marginally less of a joke by way of stat scaling? Uh, that is, that would be at least somewhat fair to say. Like, I mean, this one is capable of doing a couple hundred damage per combo. Yeah. I mean, that can almost take off a quarter to a third of our health. Then again, then you say this one had an instant kill. It's either this one or the next one, I forget which one, but yeah, one one of them has an instant kill. It might I think it's this one. Anyway, yeah, that's like okay, so it, it's like it's threatening. It makes it harder, but not really in any kind of an interesting way. I think I said that exact thing about this exact thing before. Balancing numbers in games is really weird. I don't I don't know if, if people appreciate how much work goes into just making sure that stuff has the right amounts and numbers of stuff in the right proportions to maintain what they consider to be a challenge. I'm not even sure how some studios do it. I mean even if we go to even if we assume that it's done retroactively with computers and stuff, I'm still not really sure how you do that kind of thing in a game like this. So as much as I'm willing to shit on it for being dull in practice, you just kind of have to hand it to any game that manages to make it work at all. Yeah, like, I mean, all things considered, I, I am glad that these fights are... I would I'd much rather have them err on the side of making these fights a joke than making these fights, like, some kind of stupid bullshit. I mean, I don't know, if if it were me, I would have had, you know, kind of the inverse situation in which instead of going and rescuing all these people, they each fight their way out of them and then you get a very tailored deal where you have one character who has their deck and you just have a, a gimmick fight based around the character's deck, taking advantage of all the factors that suddenly you have very particular control over. That's like, that's game design, right? Uh, that would work, except for the part where you, they have, like, they don't get new decks. Like, they have the same decks they had when we went into the Lava Caves. Right, but I, I mean, they still have their particular decks rather than the other characters' decks. Like, the decks are all unique-ish. It's not like they, they suddenly have a different deck, but okay. they have what they have, and the game can be certain of who your party is going to be and they can control everything to a very strict amount of action economy. But they can't control what's in that deck. Like, for example, we just got Mizuti. If I was forced to play with just Mizuti, I would have, like, 
three elements to play with, and they would almost all be level one and two cards. So, like, their damage output would be absolute trash. Yeah. That's why we call it game design, folks. It's not actually that easy. That said, a sufficiently dedicated JRPG scenario designer can come up with excuses to contrive basically whatever the hell they want. I mean, combat design is one of those things where, you know, I'm sure the writer will think of something actually kind of works. As long as it's just combat design and you don't have to tie it into anything, like, the, the point is these scenarios are all kind of isolated from each other. And that makes them open to contrivance, which writers love that shit. Anyway, all that would have been much more interesting than what we actually got, which is five of the same thing with different colours and higher numbers. Yeah. But at least there's only one more.